All right, so we're opening this innings of the Sportsmax Zone with cricket. West Indies women, they put themselves in a good position for a semi-final spot at the T20 World Cup after beating Bangladesh by eight wickets early on Thursday to move a top Group B on net run rate. The Windies restricted Bangladesh to 103 for eight after winning the toss and bowling with player of the match Karishma Ramharak taking four for 17 off her quota, supported by two for 25 from leg spinner Abby Fletcher. Captain Nigar Sultana top scored for Bangladesh with 39. While chasing 104 for victory, the Caribbean ladies reached the target with 43 balls to spare, led by Captain Haley Matthews, 34, and Stefani Taylor, who retired hurt with 27. Let's hear from Captain Haley Matthews. After that first defeat, we did speak a lot about how we want to come back and how we want to do it as a team. And I think everyone was up for the challenge from that moment. Um, Obviously, in World Cups, you lose one game early on. It does put the pressure on, but I think the team has been wonderful with the way they've handled the pressure. Um, and just everyone in a good mood, everyone in good spirits, and I think everyone's up for the challenge. That's been the biggest thing. Um, I think a lot of the time, when you do get into trouble situations, um, players and a team can sometimes shy from it. But I think the way the girls have stepped up and really tried to put in big performances and taken the attack to the other teams has been great to see. Currently ranked number six in the world, West Indies now lead Group B on net run rate over South Africa and England, having played one game more than group favourites England. Bangladesh and Scotland are at the bottom of the table. West Indies play current world number two, England, in their final group match on Tuesday in Dubai. So when we got to talk cricket... We have to call none other than Nikhil Utam Chandani. Good afternoon, Nikhil. How are you doing? Good afternoon, Maria. Um, I'm doing well, and I know that you are as well. I could hear the excitement in your voice when you called the name of the player of the match. I can't help myself. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, nah, that's great, man. You, she deserves celebrating, and I think uh, it's amazing that she has her sister as well, you know, to be able to come and talk about the game. So you should be incredibly proud. Yeah, very, very proud. But let's, you know, Nikhil, look at the overall match. Because for me, just the manner in which all of the bowler, bowlers and the fielders went about their business to, of course, restrict Bangladesh for 103, I found that to be top class. Because Karishma could bowl the balls, but the girls in the field were really uh, efficient today. And I'm thankful because one of the points I found myself talking about a lot this, this World Cup were the drop catches and the missed fields and all of that. And don't get me wrong, Dutton had some today, but it was overshadowed by the way in which they went about their duties. I think today we saw the strength of that West Indies bowling attack. Uh, and for me, the bowling has never really been a problem. If I think back to uh, when England came to the Caribbean at the end of 2023 and all the cricket since then, the bowling has been able to limit teams. It's been the batting that has let them down at times. But for the West Indies, led by Krishma Ramarat today, to be able to bowl 17 overs of spin, I think it really suits conditions in the UAE. And they'll take a lot. I was worried watching the first 10 overs, seeing Bangladesh get to 58 for two after 10, hitting boundaries. But then to, to restrict them to under 50 runs in the next 10, while well, they took the six wickets, I thought that was really admirable to see. And even using spin at the back end. Now, there is obviously room for improvement in the fielding and also maybe the consistency earlier. Because when you come up against a team like England, that margin of error now becomes minimal. But a lot to take from it, and really good to see Haley Matthews in the runs, and also see the aggression in which DeAndre Dalton is playing with in these last couple of games. Yeah, absolutely good to see. Nikhil, when Haley won the toss and decided to bowl, uh, how did you feel about that decision? Yeah, it was surprising. Um, but again, I completely understand. You've got to play the conditions in front of you as much as history does play a part. And also, I don't think it was such a bad thing because... You saw how much it helps their net run rate now to be at top of the table. When you think about, obviously, the fact that you would know exactly what you're chasing and also be able to chase it down in quick time inside of 13 overs, it was a huge boost in that net run rate column, which could be useful. For me, I think they've got to be England to have any chance, but you just never know. So definitely a very smart decision, and luckily for them, it paid off. Yeah, speaking about smart decisions, Stefani Taylor retired hurt. And for me, watching her in pain today was very, very painful. We know what a Stefani Taylor can do. She has not been bowling because of this knee injury. And of course, today, just looking at her, 
hobbling around the field, struggling, was very, very painful. I'm very concerned about her because I know if we are to go deep into this competition, we need a fit Stefani Taylor, without a doubt. Stefani is destructive once she is fully fit. And today, I have to say, you know, it had me a bit worried, Nikhil. No, I think it is grounds to be very worried. Um, you saw, even when she's not at her best and the trials and tribulations she's had with this injury, you still see what her presence is causing. I mean, it's a smart decision to get her in the power play because she does less running there and still can show that explosive nature. But again, it's a massive concern because now you've got a decision to make. Do we prioritize potentially going deeper in the tournament and preserving Stefani's health? But again, you come against England in a game that pretty much you have to win. So is it worth then, you know, throwing everything at them to try and get that win? So yeah, it's a tough one for the coaching staff to decide on. And it was obviously very hard to see the visuals and see her limping to the other end. But it speaks volumes of, of the champion she's been in West Indian women's cricket, the stalwart, and, and how much she's willing to put on the line for her West Indian side. So I really do appreciate her from a West Indian perspective. And I hope that it's not too serious that she can somehow turn around for that England game. Because to me, I think she's probably the second most important West Indian player after Hayley Matthews. Yeah, and Nikhil, of course, her record is well documented. As a 19-year-old, she had become the first player or the youngest player to achieve 1,000 runs in one-day international cricket. And um, well, that was eons ago. I think that was back in 2009. And I just wonder if that was part of the reason why she played today, because I'm thinking that given the fact that there was a need to press the gas today for the net run rate, if there would be some thought as to not playing her in this match, because there was this need to get runs, get runs quickly. And if you have like a Kiana Joseph who does well hitting the ball over the top in the power play, there must have been a temptation today not to play her. I, I definitely think so, Lance. I also think at the halfway stage when they had the 103 to chase, I think they could have also made the decision to say, well, let's let a Kiana Joseph open or even Chanel Henry, who is continuing to develop with bat in hand and can also find the boundary. And then if you lose maybe two or three wickets, then you can have a Stefani coming in at number five. But I sense that she wants to be involved. And maybe it's a, a situation where, you know, she thinks her fitness is at a certain level where it may not be. But again, she's been involved in so many World Cups in the last decade. She has led this team. And I can't fault her for wanting to be in each and every moment of, of the West Indies at this World Cup because this could very well be her last. And it's always a tough thing as a player to have to manage. Yeah, and of course, she did achieve the milestone today of becoming the first West Indian to achieve 1,000 runs in T20 World Cup cricket on the, on the women's side. So um, there was some satisfaction uh, to her uh, coming out to play today. But as we had said before on the show, Nikhil, the opening game lost to South Africa was very, very damaging to the West Indies' hopes of uh, going deep into this tournament. And now, although they have recovered to the extent that they have, they still have this task of beating world number two England in their final group match to guarantee their spot in the semis. It's possible, you know, Lance. I think the way Bangladesh bowled at England early in the tournament and the amount of spin that they had and the amount of spin the West Indies will throw at England, I think it's possible. The biggest thing is the batting. And can they maybe get uh, Hayley Matthews at her best? We know how much responsibility is on her. And I think sometimes it can almost work against her because there's so much pressure. But I've been really impressed with what I've seen from DeAndre Dotton, the way she swept the ball in spinning conditions, the way the aggression she's brought to the crease. And, you know, I understand they like this, this blueprint of having Shemaine Campbell at three. But in the event they're chasing a 120 or 130, it may be worth getting DeAndre Dotton up the order because at that stage, you really have to, to go at it. You have to go after that score. And I think the ability she brings to the crease, the presence she brings is a menacing one. And England have felt the wrath of a DeAndre Dotton many times over the last decade or so. And it could be, you know, one individual performance in conditions like this where it's low scoring and you're posting about par scores one individual performance, especially from the world boss, could end up winning the game for the West Indies. So they've got to believe, I think they've got a decent chance. But again, the batting for me has to deliver. Yeah, and uh, you, the, it's well documented as well, the, 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 the fact that, especially from the batting standpoint and with Stefani's uh, injury issues now, so much depends on Hayley Matthews and DeAndre Dottin coming good. So if the West Indies were to beat England, I guess it would be an upset result because England at the moment are overall, based on form and performances, a better team. 
But there is every chance, given the quality in the West Indies team, that they could create this upset. And it brings me to Karishma Ramarak and how well she is bowling. Uh, four for 17 today, um, Nikhil. And um, I just think that one of her strong points is that she hardly bowls bad balls. When you're playing uh, limited overs cricket and white ball cricket, one of the key things for bowlers is not to bowl bad balls. And Karishma Ramarak hardly bowls bad balls. Yeah, for sure. I think on surfaces like this where, you know, there's some variable bounce, there's the two-paced nature about it, the line that she bowls, being very straight, always attacking the stumps, I think makes her quite a, a damaging prospect for oppositions. And it also, I mean, I looked at her World Cup record today, took the most figures for the West Indies at the 2023 World Cup. Now, of course, is, is starting really well. It's amazing to see the 10 wickets in six World Cup matches. She's got at 11 runs per wicket. So we have to also admire and celebrate her record in high-pressure situations, in high-pressure games. And I enjoyed her transparency as well in the post-match today, saying she felt she wasn't really at her best in the first two. And for me, when she's at her best, again, another off spinner to take pressure off Hayley Matthews, but it adds to the variation in spin that the West Indies, you know, can put out and, and sort of attack teams with. Yeah, you referenced Deandra Dotton a short while ago, Nikhil. I must say that when she returned recently and we saw her in the CPL, she looked a little bit rusty. We saw uh, hints of her quality, but overall she looked a little bit rusty and, and her timing and so on off. But uh, she looks a lot better now, doesn't she? Oh, for sure. I mean, obviously she's not bowling, um, which I would still like to see her bowl. I, I saw a flashback today of when she got the 5 for 5 against Bangladesh in 2018. So skilled uh, at taking pace off. But again, conditions demand. And right now, the conditions are demanding spin. And luckily, the West Indies have got so much of it. I really do like the way Hayley Matthews is using the Munisar, is using Ramarat, and others to support her, Kiana Joseph as well, thinking about matchups. But for me, when it comes to the batting, even if Hayley Matthews does get off, I expect the West Indies, if they bat first, they're going to have to post above par. And if they chase, it's going to be maybe a 130, 140, could even be more. They've got to be aggressive. And I think you get, similar to a situation that like we discussed with Nicholas Puran, you get your best player facing the most deliveries. I wouldn't be against her opening the batting or even batting at number three. Yeah, and a quick comment on Bangladesh today, Nikhil. Again, that glaring problem of drop catches, it keeps, you know, it keeps popping up. And one of the stats I heard from the commentator today was that Bangladesh had already dropped nine catches in the competition so far. And this was before the match had ended. So I'm pretty sure there were more drop catches. But to me, it's something that has affected a lot of the teams. Yeah, and there will be some inexperience. We've seen it from Scotland as well. I mean, for this Bangladesh side, aside in transition, a lot of new, younger players in that team. And it's a World Cup. You know, it's big stages. It's high pressure, a lot on the line. But I did think it was quite impressive to see the way they started. One of their biggest problems has been sort of the run rate and the strike rate, not finding the boundary. But for them to hit seven boundaries in the first 10 overs to get to that 58, I thought was a step in the right direction. I think a graphic came up on the commentary today on, on television saying that, you know, out of all the World Cup teams, they've, they've had the lowest strike rate in T20 cricket since the last World Cup. So they understand that that's a problem. And it's good to see that they're, you know, trying to find different ways to score and find boundaries. And hopefully, you know, with their captain and others, they can maybe move in that direction to prepare for the next World Cup as it's a young team and who will learn a lot. Yeah, we're going to leave uh, things here now, uh, Nikhil, but I just want to get a quick comment from you before you go on the uh, National Cricket League T10 tournament you're covering over there in the USA. Of course, it's being shown live on Sportsmax and Sportsmax 2, and some West Indians are there, aren't they? Um, Ashmead Ned, Dominic Drakes, I think Kimo Paul, Hayden Walsh Jr., and so on. A quick comment on the tournament as it is unfolding. Yeah, it's a brand new um, initiative here in the USA. It's happening in Dallas. Um, and yeah, it's amazing to see they've transformed the University of Texas at Dallas venue into a cricket field in two months. So they've had their challenges with the conditions, but the way that the tournament is being organized has been phenomenal. The caliber of player, you mentioned the West Indians. Um, they've had internationals like Tim David and Chris Green, who's come from the CPL, both of them, doing Pretorius, Imran Tahir. So they've got a really good caliber of, of internationals. They've even got some legends, Suresh Reina and, and Dinesh Kartik playing. But yeah, it's been a great opportunity again, Lance, for our West Indian players to get more mileage. Someone like Mika Louis, who really impressed at the CPL for St. Kitts, has now come here and the other night he made 50 and 17 balls. So good to see that, you know, there's continuous cricket for the West Indians to be playing. 
And it just shows our young cricketers around the region that there are tons of opportunities to make money, to make a living, and also do what you love. So as we ramp up, Windy's into the semis, yeah? Yes. Uh, Mariah, honestly, I would love to, to say that. I think England start as favourites, but it's possible. You and Lance might be related. We need to check that out. <laughs> okay, <laughs> We're going <no worries. laughs> to take a break. Thank you so much, Nikhil. We'll Cheers, talk please. again soon when we make the semifinals. And then I'll fix both you and Lance Whitaker. Break time. <laughs>